Hey, it's Miss Dorothy. I'm back for another episode of Goodnight Lighthouse, and I'm here tonight to read you a Bible story. Remember, Miss Dorothy told you that the best book you can ever read is the Bible, and it's filled with stories to teach you lessons and help you learn things, and you can grow closer to God by reading the Bible. Well, tonight, I have a very special and very interesting story from the Bible. It's about one of the miracles that Jesus performed when he was here on the earth. Do you know what a miracle is? Well, a miracle is when something unbelievable happens and it can only happen because of God. That's what a miracle is. We see him all the time. God does miracles every single day. But when Jesus was here on the earth, he did miracles right in front of people. And that's pretty amazing. Tonight, we're going to read the Bible story about the feeding of the 5,000. And this story is called the loaves and fishes the loaves and fishes now you know what a fish is and a loaf that's like a loaf of bread you know when you go to the store and you buy a loaf of bread or mom buys a loaf of bread so she can make you a sandwich that's what a loaf is and this is a story about jesus performing a miracle with the loaves and the fishes i wonder who this little guy is hmm We'll need to find out what he has to do with this miracle when we get into this book and see what's inside. Now remember, when Miss Dorothy reads you a Bible story, you need to pay extra close attention because there's always a lesson to learn, something that God wants you to hear. So we're going to get into this Bible story, we're going to read this book together, and we're going to see what we can learn tonight. Okay? Sit up, listen up, I hope you're ready, because here we go. Once upon a lakeside, a long time ago, a little boy called Benjamin went and said hello to a group of guys whose fame had spread, Jesus and company. Simon and Andrew, James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Tom, another James and Simon, and Judas one and two. This was Jesus' company, a very mixed crew. There's Jesus and his disciples. And that must be Benjamin there going to greet them. Ben joins the crowd at sunrise. They've come from far and wide, hiking from the villages into the countryside, up into the wilderness with Jesus as their guide. So they keep on walking, steady now and slow. Some have wished for learning and listen as they go. And some have wished for healing from Jesus and company. Many get their wishes, but now the sun is hot. The crowd is feeling quite fed up, or rather they are not. For food is just the very thing these people have not got. All these people came to see Jesus, but they forgot to bring food. And they stayed all day. They must be really hungry. These people have no food, and now the sun is going down. These people need to eat, but they are nowhere near a town. They're walking through a wilderness with no food to be found. Not a bite to eat, and there are thousands to be fed. Jesus' company tells him, Send them somewhere else instead. There's nothing here, no meat, no bread. This place is simply dead. The disciples were telling Jesus that he better send the people away. They can't feed them. There's a lot of people that need food. I don't know what you're talking about, he says. They don't have to go. There's plenty here for everyone, I tell you. Don't you know? Easy peasy lemon squeezy for Jesus and company. Oh, sure, reply his frowning friends. Can we buy food out here? How are we going to pay for it? What's the big idea? To feed them all would cost us more than we earn in a year. Jesus tells them everything will be fine, but they just don't see how it's going to work out. They should probably trust him. He is Jesus. Just find me a nice appetizer, Jesus immediately commands. His friends go to investigate and see where Benny stands. He's holding a small picnic pack, tight between his hands. 
Could I have a word, says a big man named Andrew. Someone here called Jesus would like to chat with you. Come along with me now and bring your picnic too. Looks like they're going to take Benjamin to talk to Jesus about the problem. So Benny goes to Jesus and his face is turning red. All I've got for supper is five loaves of barley bread and two small fish. It's not enough to keep this crowd all fed. Don't worry, lad, says Jesus, as he takes it from Ben's hand. But what on earth is he up to? Benny cannot understand. To feed this crowd my picnic? Really, we'll have to expand. Jesus says he's going to feed the people with that little lunch. Benny doesn't understand how he can do that. But he is Jesus. Jesus tells his friends it's time to settle people down. They sit in groups of 50 on the hard but grassy ground, hoping against hope that somewhere food will soon be found. Jesus lifts the barley loaves into the evening air. Before he dishes out the fish, he whispers a short prayer, thanking God his Father for the food they're going to share. He was praying before they eat, just like we do. At once the supper multiplies, as Jesus says the grace, and now there is a race for everyone to stuff their face. Jesus and company, the first to serve fast food in this vast place. Benjamin's astounded, says aloud, how can it be that Jesus made my picnic feed this king-sized family? He's made a meal of miracles. It's a mystery to me. They had enough food for everybody. Has everybody had enough? Don't stand there twiddling your thumbs. There's seconds here for everyone, cries Jesus to his chums. They pick up all the leftovers in twelve big basket crumbs. That night, Benjamin goes home and gets into his bed. Tells his mom about his dead. Be tells his mom about his day. Five thousand people fed. Jesus' company are the best things since sliced bread. High up on the mountainside, a long time ago, Benny saw a miracle, a wonderful show. But that was quite normal thing for Jesus and company. Simon and Andrew, James and John, Philip Bartholomew, Matthew, Tom, another James, and Simon and Judas 1 and 2. This was Jesus' company. One you can join, too. Wow, that was a great Bible story. That was so amazing how Jesus took that little boy's lunch of just a few loaves of bread and a few fishes, and he fed all those people with it. That's not something we can do. That's something only God can do. That's a miracle. And I hope you learned what a miracle is tonight and enjoyed this great Bible story, seeing what Jesus did for all those hungry people. Jesus loves us, and he does things for us all the time. And if we're hungry, he's going to make sure we have something to eat, just like he did with all those people. I really like this here, where he named off all of these people who followed Jesus, all of these men who were followers of Jesus over here. And then it says, this was Jesus' company, one you can join to. What does that mean? What that means is that you and me, we can be followers of Jesus just like all of these men were. Now, Jesus might not be here with us so that we can follow him around. But Jesus lives among us, and we can follow him by learning through the Bible what he wants us to do with our life. And that is what Miss Dorothy wants for you when you grow up. More than anything, I want you to follow Jesus. I want you to learn how much Jesus loves you, and I want you to follow Jesus in everything you do in life. And the way to do that is to learn to read so you can read your Bible. And we can hear more great stories like this one. Great stories from the Bible. I really enjoyed Goodnight Lighthouse tonight. 
I love, love, love reading Bible stories to you. It's very, very special, and I hope that you'll always want to hear Bible stories because I'm always going to want to read them to you. Well, this was a great Good Night Lighthouse, and I think we need to take a minute to thank Jesus and thank God for all the miracles that happen around us every single day and the miracle that happened in this book, too. So let's take a minute and pray together. Will you pray with Miss Dorothy? Okay, great. Fold your hands, close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for the Bible. And thank you for the stories that teach us about you, about Jesus, and about how you want us to live our life. Thank you for the miracles in the Bible. And thank you for the miracles that happen around us every single day. Thank you for the miracle of life the miracle of getting a new baby brother or a new baby sister, the miracle of having a great mom and dad. Everything that you give us is miraculous, and we're so thankful for all of it. Thank you, God, for our school and our family and our friends and our teacher. Please watch over them as they sleep. Protect them. Keep them safe. And thank you, God, for how much you love us and how you show us about that love in the Bible and in our everyday life. Help us to learn up, to grow up, to learn to follow the Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, little puppy, time for you to go to sleep now. I need you to go to sleep and dream about miracles. Dream about all the wonderful things that God does for us every single day. I think that's what I'm going to dream about tonight. And I'm going to be right back here for another episode of Good Night Lighthouse really, really soon. I think I have some more Bible stories we can read, and I'm excited about that. But until then, obey and obey right away. And Miss Dorothy will see you really, really soon. Okay? Bye. Bye.